This is a video about a mystery. It's about the strange disappearance of the Roanoke Colony, the first English colony to settle in North America. In the 1580s, it vanished without a trace, leaving behind nothing but a single word scrawled on a wooden beam. In the 16th century, Spain was rapidly becoming an unchecked powerhouse in Europe. Spain's gold and mineral imports from South America greatly enriched the Spanish Empire. Along with this, the Spanish were conquering swathes of new land, seemingly without opposition. These reasons, amongst religious, industrial and even ethical concerns, compelled England to also set its sights westwards. People from all walks of life left England in droves to assess the potential of North America and to privateer against the trade routes of Spain. So Walter Raleigh was a key figure during this time and a favored courtier of Elizabeth I. Raleigh was given a royal patent to explore Virginia and lead the way for potential future settlements by the Kingdom of England. In 1585, Raleigh sent a fleet of five ships to land England's first colony in North America. These ships were under the command of Raleigh's far removed cousin, Richard Grenville, and explorer, Ralph Lane. The ships landed on Roanoke Island in modern day North Carolina, and over 100 settlers disembarked. From reports of Grenville and Raleigh, relations with the local natives, the Croatans and the Secretans, grew violent very quickly. The settlers even burned down a Secretan village over a stolen silver cup. Grenville ordered Lane and the settlers to the north of the island and left 15 of his men to help protect the colony from future altercations. Grenville then left the settlement, mostly starved of food, to privateer in South America. Upon leaving, he promised Lane that he would return within a year with more men. In 1587, Grenville enlisted the artist John White, a member of the original Roanoke expedition, to lead a new colonial voyage on his behalf. This new journey was to Chesapeake Bay near Maryland. Grenville ordered White to stop by Roanoke Island on the way to pick up the detachment of soldiers that he left there. However, when the ships reached the island, it was empty. Barring a single eerie skeleton, the settlement was completely abandoned. 90 men, 17 women and 11 children then got off the ships at Roanoke, led by John White. For some unexplained reason, they were then refused their continued voyage to Chesapeake Bay. The captain of the ships that brought them, Simon Fernandez of Portugal, just left them there, refusing them permission to reboard. Fernandez's motives are not wholly understood to this day, but they could have been potentially politically motivated. The only recourse to the new settlers was to try and rebuild the abandoned Roanoke colony. Again, things became dire for the colony very quickly. Relations with the nearby native tribes were apparently strained to non-existence. The altercations came to a head with the unprovoked murder of one of the English settlers. The settlement decided to send John White back to England with a goal to gather defensive supports for the colony. Growing strife between England and Spain meant it was not until 1590 that White was actually able to return. White came ashore Roanoke once more with a landing party and made his intention clear that he was English and a friend to the settlers. But there was no reply. The colonists had once more disappeared. There was no sign of battle or struggle, no dead bodies, no skeletons. The houses and buildings had been taken apart in an orderly fashion and removed. White had instructed the islanders beforehand to carve a Maltese cross for him should they be in danger or forced to leave. This cross was never found. The only tangible things left behind were two carved inscriptions. First was a palisade of wood placed after White's departure. On the palisade was a single word, Croatoan. Second were the letters C-R-O scratched onto the surface of a tree near the shore. 
So what happened? Where did the settlers go? Were they killed by the natives? Did they starve? Did they move away from the island freely? Were they disappeared in some 16th century political agenda? Let's find out what happened after this. Starting off with White himself, the former artist assumed immediately that the colonists had moved to join with the mostly friendly natives, the Croatans, on Croatoan Island. Their original settlement was supposed to be 80 kilometers inland anyway, so White surmised that they had simply up and left Roanoke for greener pastures. Unfortunately for White, brewing violent storms refused his passage to continue searching, and he was forced back to England, never to see his family again. After White's failed attempt, subsequent voyagers attempted to recontact the settlement, but no confirmed sightings on Croatoan were ever made. The Spanish did, however, once note the peculiarity of Croatans waving to them and playing European-style instruments as they sailed by. In 1998, archaeological evidence was found on Croatoan Island, which supports White's theory that the fledgling colony moved there. A signet ring bearing the crest of a man who was from Roanoke's settlement was found. Captain Bartholomew Gilbert specifically led a voyage to Chesapeake Bay in 1603 to search for the remnants of the settlement. The reasoning here is that John White had apparently noted that the settlers had been talking about relocating from Roanoke. Their potential destination might have been where they were originally supposed to go to. Gilbert and four of his men disembarked, but were ambushed and killed by natives. There was no apparent provocation for this, and the rest of the crew of the ship were inexplicably able to leave Chesapeake Bay without any issues. Four years after Gilbert's ill-fated voyage, Jamestown was set up in Virginia, becoming the first successful English colony in North America. The searches for the Roanoke colony started up again. John Smith writes that in his dealings with Pocahontas' father, Powhatan, that the chieftain admitted to killing the Roanoke survivors near Chesapeake Bay. This chieftain said that the English group had merged with a local Chesapeake tribe and refused to join with his own. Powhatan showed off musket barrels and personal iron accessories that formerly belonged to the English. Also supporting Smith's report is evidence of Elizabethan pottery close to a known Algonquian village, 50 miles from Roanoke. The position and dating of the pottery could belong to nobody else but the Roanoke settlers, suggesting some of them spent at least some time with the tribe there. So why are we all still confused about this? First off, it's entirely possible that Powhatan was speaking of the original disappearance of the first Roanoke colony, before White had even arrived with his second group. Remember that two sets of people disappeared from the island. The original settlers could have also wandered inland, seeking food during a time of scarcity. The 15 men left behind by Grenville would have certainly been carrying muskets with them as protection. Secondly, Powhatan could have been displaying spoils taken from Bartholomew Gilbert's men, who had died only a few years earlier in a similar place to where his attack happened. Further disputing Powhatan's version of events is that there are sporadic mentions of interactions with so-called white Indians, long after John Smith's report. The common assertion is that these are the children of the Roanoke settlers, who had married within tribes and adopted themselves into Native American cultures. These unknown people were described as grey-eyed and familiar with English and Christianity. When the French first settled in North Carolina, they said that they had very bizarre and unexpected interactions with blonde-haired, blue-eyed Tuscarora natives. Even much later in the 1880s, it was discovered that a lot of the native families in North Carolina shared an uncanny resemblance of surnames with the Roanoke settlers. Their language included many words that were eerily similar to ones found in 16th century English, and they asserted that their lineage went all the way back to the colony. But that's just another mystery we may never know the answer to. Thanks for watching. Toodles.